रामाय राम भद्राय राम चंद्राय वेद से रघुनाथाय नाथाय सीताय पति ए नम सुंद्रकांड चैप्टर नंबर एटीन Ravana in the Ashoka Grove. There yet was left to Marathi only a small part of the night after his wide search for Sita through Lanka, after his entry into the Ashoka Grove, and after his careful observation of the lady to satisfy himself that she was Sita and none else. The mighty lord of the isle was called back to the world of mortals by the sweet sounds of auspicious music, vocal and instrumental, that ushered in a new day. His first thoughts on waking were of Sita, to whom he had lost his heart, and whose lovely image filled it ever. His dress and decorations, all loose and disordered, endowed with strength and pride beyond the wildest reach of imagination, yet. He was a slave to his unholy lust after Sita. So he rose from his bed and in his royal disorder he took his way to the Ashoka grove through the roads that threaded the gardens rich and brilliant with gold and gems. It was the home of trees ever bright with fruits and flowers. Long sheets of water covered with flowers of diverse hue charmed the eye. Birds of strange color and plumage and beasts of every kind made it their home. And as Ravana passed through it with a careless eye upon its wonders, many of his wives followed him even as nymphs of heaven attend upon the Lord Indra. Some went before him with golden lights, some waved soft chowries by his side, some fanned him gently, some bore goblets of gold, Some bore swords and other weapons. Some carried stools, seats, and settees. There was a lady among them who bore in a gem-encrusted jar of gold sweet-flavored wine, and there walked behind him another noble lady with a royal umbrella set in a rod of gold and casting a bright sheen all around, like a lordly swan or a moon in its full. Like streaks of lightning in a cloud, the ladies of Ravana went with him, their eyes heavy with sleep, their limbs adorned with curious patterns in sandal, aloes, and other perfumes, their ornaments in wild disorder, their hair flowing loose about them, and tiny beads of perspiration on the brows, like delicate dewdrops on the blown lotus petals, and they walked with an unsteady gait under the influence of wine and sleep. Their eyes red with too frequent potations, their lovely hair adorned with exquisite chaplets, their garlands about their shoulders faded with hot sweat. They followed their lord through love and respect, even to the presence of their rival. And he, their dread lord and mighty, was hastening with proud and lordly steps to meet the lady Sita, burning with unholy and unbridled lust, and entirely oblivious of everything except his one overpowering passion. And there fell upon the ears of Hanuma the sweet tinkle of anklets and waistbands. Some ladies went before the Shagriva with lamps of gold in their hands, filled with sweet perfumed oils. Ravana shone in their midst like the god of love, armed with his bow of sugar cane, as he walked along the slanting eyes of coppery red, and his heart a prey to pride, haughtiness, and lust. His upper garment, white and spotless as the foam on the newly churned milk, caught in his armlets, and all oblivious of it, he took his way, dragging it after him. And Anjaneya, from his leafy retreat, cast his eyes intently upon the Lord of Lanka of matchless strength, valor, and other rare, excellent things impossible to others that were of no account to him. The far away, yet his exceeding splendor deceived one into the belief that he was very near. And in his wake, they came with a charming grace, his wives peerless in their duty and loveliness. And thus did the famed Lord of Lanka enter the Ashoka Grove at their head. 
the son of the holy saint Vishravas, the ruler of the destinies of the Rakshasa world, endowed with illimitable strength, his eyes erect and aggressive with the pride that filled his heart, he advanced towards Maruti with his strangely fashioned ornaments and decorations with his queens around him like the lord of night in the midst of his starry court. The son of Vayu said to himself, Verily, this is the mighty body of Ravana and none else. And to follow more closely the movements of Ravana, he lowered himself to another perch. In fact, Hanuman, born of the loins of the puissant Lord of Air, endowed with might, strength, the speed, the splendor of the Lord of Garuda himself, could not face him, the Rakshasa king. Such was the blinding luster that shone around him. So he said to himself, I cannot conceal from myself the fact that my clever disguise and tiny shape are of no avail before this master of illusions. And he hid himself more closely behind the flowers and leaves. And Ravana drew near, meanwhile, all athirst to behold Sita, the black eyed and hair dark at the ends. Mangalam Koshalendraya Mahani Gunapi Chakravarti Dhanurjaya Sarva Bhomaya Mangalam.